next level in stage two is the purgation period. And here in stage two, in the purgation period, it's a period of cleansing. And the dark night of the soul is encountered and experienced here within the purgation period. And there are three dark nights to be experienced in prayer. The first dark night is the dark night of the senses. The second dark night is the dark night of the mind. And the third dark night is the dark night of the soul. So within the first climate, which is the dark night of the senses, we find ourselves untangling ourselves from illusory pleasures that have caused us to suffer. So we withdraw the senses from the objects that are causing us to suffer. So for example, if somebody is an alcoholic, the alcohol which they are indulging in and enjoying is causing them to suffer, but they don't want to give it up. They can't give it up because of the addiction. Um, they're addicted to whatever very, very small pleasure they're actually getting out of it because they haven't understood yet where real pleasure comes from. So during this stage, when we withdraw from the objects of our senses, we may find that our senses have a little bit of a fit. Um, they're trying to recapture you so that you stay with, within a paradigm that, that you're familiar with and that everyone around you is familiar with. So your desires may suddenly become inflamed. But don't be alarmed. When you start praying like this, just see these desires that are coming up. Just see them as dirty laundry from your past coming up to try to throw some kind of um, distraction in your path. Throw your consciousness into the washing machine of prayer and watch your temptations and hankerings dissipate. I have experienced this personally. I spent many years in very, very deep prayer. And um, as I did so, I saw a complete shedding of my skin. The person that I was when I was younger is not the person that I am today. And it is only due to prayer. I did not go to psych psychologists, psychiatrists, to counselors. And I probably could have done because I definitely was a very troubled human being back then. And I was addicted to all kinds of pleasures. You can't even imagine. I mean, I was in the rock world. I was in the rock business and the music industry. So I was exposed to every kind of pleasure that there is on the planet. And I gave them all up for God and for goddess. And change is never easy, of course. Um, and my senses, who were used to getting their way by any means, they didn't like the change. But they had never been disciplined before. They're like, they're like, senses are like wild children who don't get disciplined by their parents. So, you know, since birth, we take what we want, we eat what we want, we watch what we want, we enjoy what we want, and we have become seekers of pleasure on every level of our being. So the vacation period of prayer becomes very essential to us uh, in order for us to ascend, to withdraw, and to see where we are rooted to passions that have a hold over us. So vocal, vocal prayer becomes our greatest friend because it cleanses the heart of the mind and the senses of all the dirt that's been collected there for many lifetimes. The hard knot of ego is about to be dissolved in this kind of praying. So the dark night of the mind, which is the second level within stage one, here becomes manifest. The mind starts to freak out. But don't be concerned because the power of holy name is so great that it illuminates in miraculous ways all things that are hidden beneath the surface so the soul purges as the soul purges its attachments to the things of this world as it does so um, the ability to keep on praying may become difficult oh hang on let me let someone in um, it becomes difficult you may find it difficult to sit still uh, to, to still the mind long enough that the praying can actually have a purpose and a goal. The soul hasn't yet reached the higher stages of prayer where spiritual pleasure becomes the fodder that makes you want to pray because you're still in the process of cleansing the heart. So at this point, this is where your dedication, your, your committedness to your praying becomes manifest. It's extremely essential to push through during that cleansing phase. So as the rock of holy name, as the rock of prayer drops deep into the pond of our consciousness, our kismet, kismet is another word for karma or samskar, 
are de these are our defects that have come back to haunt us from our past. Eye for an eye, every one of our deeds comes back to haunt us. And they still exist in us. We carry these kismets, these karmas in our energetic body. And they're all waiting to come to the surface for cleansing and for healing, to challenge us and to make us face what is actually there inside of us. Now at this stage, baptism or initiation is incomparably essential. It is so impactful to go and seek out a holy master um, or a saint, a sadhu, who can help us to transcend and get through this very difficult stage. Then we become um, ready to receive the holy wisdom in the form of a holy teacher. And a true, and a true holy master has the power to bridge for, you, bridge for you the purgative and illuminative forces of prayer. And they allow for the soul to move upward into the higher climates that are only found in the next stages of prayer. So during this process, you may find that your urges and your itches of the senses may become quite intense. The senses, as they pry themselves away from the objects of their pleasure, become desperate. So we can really see where we're addicted and bound to our suffering. I say that we are addicted and bound to our own suffering. Suffering is not something that is happening to us. It's something that we are creating. So at this stage, um, it can become spiritually dangerous because the rocks of distraction are going to come up faster and more furious than ever before, trying to uh, get your attention away from prayer. So during this process, you may find yourself regressing. So in order not to regress, there are five things that need to happen. One is to seek out spiritual association. That means seeking out friendships, or inspiration from and with people who are more elevated than you. The second thing is to fix yourself daily to your prayer, no matter what, which we already discussed. The third thing is to eat a peaceful, non-violent diet. We cannot transcend and realize the kingdom or have a vision of our creators as long as we are indulging in the eating of flesh or drinking of blood. The fourth thing is to be determined that no matter what, I will pray, I will get a vision of the kingdom. I want to see God and goddess with these divine eyes that I have, and I am determined to see that. And that is the purpose of your prayer. And the fifth thing will be to be silent, that while you're praying, that you don't allow distractions to come in and destroy you, tell your family members, you turn off your phone, you, don't, you turn off the television, that you cover your head, you light your candle, and you close your eyes to this world, and you go very deep into prayer. These are the five climates that will help you to become strong and will help you to fight for your life, for your freedom. Freedom from what? You're freeing yourself from these habits that are causing you to suffer. So the dust and the dirt that was in the bottom of the pond of your consciousness has now risen up to the surface of your mirror to reflect back to you so that you can cleanse it and wash away in the power of prayer what's coming up for you. So this process can take many lifetimes, or in others it can take a day. And that depends on the two things. So the first thing is the Sukriti, which we discussed, which in Sanskrit means your spiritual bank account, which accumulates over many lifetimes. And to increase your Sukriti, uh, your spiritual bank account, it, it increases with prayer, with the study of scriptures, and with association of saints, and doing charity unto others, especially those who are in need. Um, once your Supriti is sufficiently filled, then uh, the Lord and Our Lady will facilitate a purificatory process that will inspire you forward in the, in the form of a holy teacher.